everybody. Welcome back to Limit Breaker Fitness. Monty here again. So as you can tell, there's a bit of a different format going on today. And that's because today what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over my free beginner program that I put out last week. I want to go over the program, the exercises, what to expect, kind of the thought process behind how it's all structured so that you can better understand why we're doing the things that we're doing and give you a little more sense of purpose at, when you're going to the gym. Because I'm a firm believer that not only do you need to know what to do, you also need to know why you're doing it. Otherwise, you're probably not going to stick with it. So let's head on over to the program that I got up here. And we're going to take a look at how we are going to start the program first before we even get into any exercises. Now I have this uh, linked. I'll have, a, I'll have it in the description and probably in the pinned comment as well. And it'll be as a Google Doc that you can go in there. Right now I have it open as an Excel sheet on my computer uh, where I made it. It'll be up there on Google Docs. Hit the link, you can get it. I uh, should be able to download it and just open it up on your phone uh, every time you go into the gym and see exactly what you need to do. Now, I designed this program for two kinds of people. For people that are just now looking to get into the gym for the first time ever, have no experience. And also for people that maybe they do have experience but it's been years and years since they've gotten into it. So this program is a little slow because we're trying to build a foundation. If you're an advanced lifter, this program's probably not for you. So don't come at me in the comments or anything going, hey, this is too easy. Uh, it's, it's gonna be difficult for someone who's just starting out, but not so overwhelming that they're either gonna get hurt, get discouraged, or and, uh, end up quitting. I also designed this program with a low barrier of entry in mind. That way, you don't have to have a ton of fancy equipment in order to get started. You should be able to perform this program in any commercial gym. In my head, I had a certain uh, purple and yellow one uh, that I was thinking about. And that one seems to be easily the most accessible for people and a good way to get into it. So now the first thing we're going to want to do when we do our program is we want to start off by getting a baseline of all our measurements and we're just going to go with a few simple measurements here now you can see over here i have a start i have four weeks in eight weeks in and 12 weeks in i don't want you weighing yourself or uh, doing any other kind of measurement more often than these uh these four checkpoints Especially with the scale, a lot of people tend to want to weigh themselves every day. And the truth is we can fluctuate, you know, uh, five pounds or so on a daily basis, simply based on uh, water weight alone. So I don't want you measuring more often than what I have here. And if you do want to weigh yourself more often, then you could do it once a week, but that's the absolute max. Now, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to get some progress picks save them, date them. This is one of the best ways to not only track your progress, but to help keep you motivated. Nothing's worse than when you're doing something over and over and over, and you're not really seeing results. So take some progress pics. It's amazing what happens when you start looking at them four weeks in, eight weeks in, and really see the changes that's going on. Because on a day-to-day -day basis, you might not notice those changes happening. Now we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna take our weight, uh, same thing, record that. And then we're gonna go with our uh, body fat percentage. And this is one of my favorite ways to do a measurement because it's better than weight because weight doesn't really take into account muscle content versus fat content. That's why we stay away from BMI. It's a, kind of an antiquated uh, way of doing things. So we're gonna go with fat percentage. Uh, for me, I like to use my uh, Samsung watch. You know, I wish they'd sponsor me, not a sponsor, but I do really like this watch. Uh, I use it for when I'm working out, help me keep track of my rest times and things like that. I got my fat percentage on there and that's gonna be important for our uh, next step. And lastly, we're gonna uh, measure our waist. Uh, I like to measure the waist right around the belly button because that's uh, 
it it's an easy reference point that everyone can get. So if you don't have experience, you know, uh, doing measurements on yourself or other people, it's an easy way to just go, hey, there's my belly button. I'm going to wrap the measure, uh, the tape measure around there. And that's my reference point. So go ahead when you open the program, take those progress picks and log everything into the start here. And then once we do this, uh, we're going to move on to our next step. Now our next step is we got to figure out what our calorie needs are because it doesn't matter what kind of training program you do. If you're not making sure that you have your nutrition in check, it doesn't matter. Okay, You might see some results, but you'll never out train a bad diet. So let's figure that out now. Now what you're going to do is you're going to go online and I have it pulled up here. You're going to find a calorie calculator. I'll link this one in the description. This is the one I like to use for myself and all my clients. And I'm just going to show you how to use this real quick. So what you're going to do is you're going to put your age. I am 30 years old. How old did you guys think I was? Leave that in the comments. Do I look 30? I hope I don't look 30. And I am a male, yes. Five foot, unfortunately, I'm only five six. Why, God? Why? Anyway, I am currently 216 pounds. And for activity, I'm going to go ahead and put moderate exercise four, uh, four to five times a week. And that's going to be uh, what you want to select too while you're on this program. Now, this is all nice and easy, but there's one more step that I want you to take with this that's going to make it more accurate and give you a better reading. And that's the settings here. We're going to go ahead and click on that. And we're going to come down to our BMR estimation formula. And I want you to click on the catch McArdle. Now, I'm not going to get into these formulas, uh, each specific one, because quite honestly, I can't remember the math off, off the top of my head. But this one, what it's going to do is it's going to take body fat into consideration as well. And that's going to give us a more accurate reading of what our uh, calorie needs are. So I got, I did it this morning. I'm currently at 32.3%. I'm not sure exactly how accurate that is. You're never going to get a 100% accurate measurement when it comes to body fat, unless you want to do something like the uh, submersible pod and, or something like that. But that's way too much for what we're doing. We just want to be able to keep track and see that it is going down. So like I said, I like to use my watch. You can use calipers. You can use the handheld uh, 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 BIA. You can use the handheld one. And we're going to go here and then we're just going to hit calculate. So it's telling me here that in order to maintain my weight, I need about uh, 2,641 calories every day. For mild weight loss, uh, weight loss and extreme weight loss, it's going to give us uh, other calorie counts. Now, this is something that uh, is, I'll do a whole video on in the future about how fast should you lose weight. But really don't worry about these because the speed at which you lose weight is going to factor completely differently from person to person. How much weight you have is also going to factor into it. People with more weight are going to have more to lose. They're going to lose it at a quicker rate. And then, you know, it'll slow down a little bit. But so what we're going to do is I'm at 2,641. I want to be between a three and a 400 calorie deficit. No more than 400 calories. I've said this before. If you go into any more of a deficit than that, then you're not going to be able to maintain or build muscle mass while you're losing weight. And while it's great that you're losing weight, it's important that we put muscle on because every pound of muscle, that's going to be about an extra 100 calories a day uh, being burnt off just at rest. So especially if you're someone just starting out, you want to build some muscle, okay? That'll help with everything else. And I'll do a whole video on the importance of building muscle in the future. So I'm at 2641. So this means I want to shoot for about 
2,300 calories a day. And with that, I will be in that three to 400 range and I can adjust from there. Now, don't worry about any of these charts or any of that, that's all way too much. Just worry about this number here. Figure out what yours is and adjust to it. Now the next thing that people are gonna ask about is probably a macro split. How much protein, how much carbs, and how many fats should I have within my uh, caloric needs? I like to do a 40-40-20 split, 40% protein, 40% carbs, and 20% fat. We never wanna go any lower than that on fat. Our body needs fat. That's why you see me cooking with it a lot. Our body needs fat. Every single cell in our body utilizes it. We need protein to be able to build the muscle. We need carbs to be able to fuel and maintain that muscle. So never exclude a macronutrient, okay? Our body needs all three. 40, 40, 20 is what I found to have success with uh, most people. We can talk about other splits later, but especially if you're just starting out, 40, 40, 20. Now that that's done, we can go back into our Excel sheet here and take a look at the program. I know this is a lot of numbers and can be a little technical, guys, but once you, once you get started, start figuring some stuff out, start rolling through with it, it gets a whole lot easier, especially if you're following my recipes and start, start incorporating them into that. I try to make sure my recipes fall into the parameters of 40, 40, 20 as well. Not always, but that's on you. You got to figure out what you like and how your body adapts and adjust from there. Now, going back into the program here, see I have a few notes for each phase. Now, phase one here, we'll go on to the next sheet down here at the bottom, hit that tab. Now, phase one is gonna be mostly machines. And we're gonna be doing a push-pull leg split with two days of cardio and abs. And the reason why I like this is because one, it allows all the muscles that want to work together to work together. There's no reason why you should be training chest one day and then training triceps another day. Those muscles are working together on every single pushing exercise you do during your chest day. So why not do the triceps as well? It saves you time. And there are advanced training techniques where you, where you can split them and they have their benefits, but that's not what we're looking for today. So a push-pull leg split with two days of cardio and abs. And phase one is going to be three weeks, and most of them are going to be uh, machine-based exercises. Now machines, what's nice about them is they're very safe, and especially for someone just starting out, they kind of... They, they kind of they isolate the muscle for you. So they're low risk and also they can really help you build that mind muscle connection that we need in order to move on in our training and do more advanced exercises. So uh, we'll do so we'll do the machines and what's nice is each machine is going to have pictures of the muscles being worked when you're using it. And that'll also help you to learn about what muscles do, what movements, and uh, really help you visualize and once again, build that mind-muscle connection. So we're going to start with cardio and abs on day one of the workout. And I have the treadmill listed here as our cardio form. And if you don't like the treadmill, or if you can't do the treadmill, you prefer something like the elliptical, or you prefer to go for walks or whatever it is, Find the form of cardio that you can stick with and, and that consistency is more important than what it is that you're doing for the cardio. So feel free to substitute it in because cardio can be so boring. Oh, Bruno. Sorry about that, guys. But cardio can be really boring. Figure out the one you like. You're going to start with 20 minutes and every week I want you to add two minutes to it. Bruno, come here. Come here, Bruno. Bruno, come lay down. Come lay down, Bruno. <laughs> anyway, he's a bad boy sometimes. So, yeah, that's, that's our cardio. 
Next up, we have the abs. We're gonna do some crunches, we're gonna do our side crunches, we're gonna do some leg lifts, and we're gonna do some planks. Now, these basic exercises are gonna allow our core to work, every muscle that's in there, as well as, uh, as, well as help build that strength and that stability that we want in the core. So start off with these, we're gonna do three sets up to 15 reps. I don't want you doing more than 15 reps because the abs are just like any other muscle. In order to get them bigger and stronger, we gotta add more weight. So if crunches are too easy for you, side crunches are too easy for you, you can add a hold to work more on the stabilization portion, or you can add some weight in the form of a dumbbell or a ball or however it is, and do it that way. If you wanna add more reps, you can, but make sure you start, you take it all, you take it all the way to failure on the reps. If you can do 30 reps and you only decide to do 20, not really gonna get a lot out of it. Eventually, we're gonna make it more harder and we're gonna add some stuff like that in there. Next up, we have our back day. We're gonna start with the lat pull down machine. We're gonna move to the row machine, the rear delt machine, the back extension machine, and then we're gonna do dumbbell shrugs as well as the low bicep curl and the high bicep curl machine. Now, all of these machines are available at any commercial gym, like I said before, a certain yellow and purple one will have all of these. So if you don't want to make a large investment in a gym membership, you don't have to. Now, you notice I have three sets, 10 to 12 reps on every one of these exercises, except for the back extension, and I'll get to that. Now, the rule is, if you can get three sets of 12, you don't have enough weight on there. So if you find that you've done all three sets, all the way up to 12 reps, increase the weight. We have a 60 second rest time between our sets. And here you see I have W1, that's week one, week two, week three. Record your weight that you used in each one of these. Like I said, you should be able to download this right to your phone from Google Docs and be able to type that in every week. And that's important because you got to keep getting progressive overload as you do the program. That's how you're going to get stronger. That's how you're going to build muscle. So record it and uh, go from there. Now the back extension machine, I want you to do a hold at the end of it when you get to the 12 reps. The reason being is just like how uh, we do the planks here, a lot of the low backs uh, functionality has to do with stabilization of our spine, keeping us upright. So we want to work the muscle the way it wants to be worked, the way it wants to work. So we're going to add a nice hold at the end. Try and get try and get it for time, and be careful that you're never rounding your back when you're doing this uh, exercise. And eventually on the channel, I will have all of the exercises for this program. I'll have shorts for them uh, done. It's just a lot of work, but. If I don't have it on my channel, there's all, there's other great uh, resources out there that you can use to find it. I just prefer if you use mine when I eventually do get everything up there. And when I do, I'll have a giant playlist for each one. But so moving on, we're going to do our cardio and abs day again on day three. Once again, 20 minutes the first week, add two minutes every week. So week two, you're going to be doing 22 minutes. Week three, you're gonna be 20, doing 24 minutes. And you're gonna do it at a low to moderate intensity. And basically, you don't wanna be dying the whole time, but you wanna, you wanna be working, okay? It's not a leisurely stroll. Now moving on, we have our push day. We're gonna do the chest press machine, the incline chest press, as well as a decline chest press. We're gonna do our chest flies, we're gonna do our shoulder presses, we're gonna do our lateral raises, and we're gonna do the tricep dip uh, machine. Uh, it might be called the tricep push down some t uh, in uh, some gyms. Once again, we're gonna do three sets, 10 to 12 reps, 60 second rest times. And this'll work every muscle and uh, on your push day, that'll work every muscle. Just like on your pull day, this will work every muscle in your back.
Finally, we have our leg day. This is day five. We're gonna start with the seated leg press. And I really like this one because, especially for a beginner, it's a very safe machine. You don't have to worry about moving plates around. And it can ha uh, I'll do a video on the different ways that you can place your feet on this. Just make sure you use the grid marks on it in order to make sure that your feet are placed in the same positions. Go at about midway through the platform and make sure your toes are angled out just a little bit when you're doing it. This will allow you to get deeper into the uh, motion and you get a better range of motion, you'll get more work out of it. We'll make it a little harder, but that's what we want. Then we got our leg extension machine. We have our seated leg curl machine. I want you to do the seated leg curl. I don't want you to do the one where you're lying down. And uh, I'll do an entire video on why I want you to do the seated one compared to the one. But basically, this is going to work your, uh, work your hamstrings better and it's gonna put less stress on your hips compared to the other one. We're gonna do our calf raise machine, our kickback machine, and then we're gonna do our hip abduction and our hip adduction. Fellas, they're not fun, I know. It feels a little weird when you're doing them, but you gotta do them. They're very important muscles down there, and just don't make eye contact with anyone while you're doing them, and you should be just fine, okay? And then finally, day six and seven, those are gonna be our rest days. Now I have here stretch and active recovery. Now stretching, do, do a lot of dynamic stretching on these days. Anything that's feeling tight, you know, stretch it out. Active recovery, you know, just get moving a little bit. Stretching is part of that active recovery. Maybe instead of doing a full uh, workout on the treadmill or whatever it is you do, you just go for a walk, you know, take the dog for a walk or something like that just to keep, keep the blood flowing, okay? Because recovery is the most important thing. If we're, if we're not gonna recover after our workouts, we're not gonna get stronger. We're just gonna overtrain and beat our bodies down for no reason. Now, you're gonna repeat this workout for three weeks, and every week, I want you to be trying to increase the amount of weight that you're doing. Like I said, if you can get three sets of 12, you need to move the weight up. Now, I don't have it listed here, a week four, because a week four is going to be what's called a deload week. Now with a deload week, you're going to do everything that you've been doing for the last three weeks, but you're going to do it at about 70% of the weight that you were doing in week three. Now this is important because it gives our body a little time to recover while keeping it active and going through all the movements. Our central nervous system, or CNS for short, it gets taxed very heavily, especially if we're using a proper amount of weight while we're working out. So it needs a break as well. It, and then our muscles, they need a break. They gotta really be able to recover. And take that deload week, it's very important. A lot of people don't, in fact, most people don't. And it can be hard to go in there and you know do a weight one week, you see the, the progress coming over the last three weeks and then suddenly you gotta lower the weight and maybe the workout feels too easy. But it's important to get that deload. It prevents injuries and helps us uh, increase our gains even more, okay? So that's the first phase of the program, sticking with the machines. That'll help us build our mind-muscle connection. It's gonna have very low stress on our, on, our, uh, on our joints and keep us safe and allow us to kind of learn the movements and proceed. And after that, we're gonna go into phase two here. Phase two is gonna be weeks uh, five through uh, five through eight. So it'll be another four weeks, three weeks of working, and a fourth week of deload. Now, the training split for phase two is gonna be the same. I have the same training split for the entirety of the program. And it's gonna be push-pull legs with two days of cardio and abs, and two days of stretching and active recovery. So we're gonna come in, once again, cardio and abs on day one. And I don't think I mentioned this, but the reason why we start with cardio and abs at, on day one, it, because I want us to have a full day between uh, working our legs. Because we're gonna be working our legs with cardio twice a week, as well as with our actual leg day down here. 
So I want to make sure we have that 48 hour recovery time because you never want to work a muscle more than uh, every 48 hours. That's the, that's the most. You got to have a minimum, uh, minimum of every other day in order to allow it to rest properly. So we start with our treadmill or whatever cardio that we want to do again. We're at 26 minutes. Once again, we're going to add two minutes a week, low to moderate intensity. I want you to try and shoot for the moderate intensity. I have low to moderate because there's going to be people here that are, you know, maybe 216 pounds like me. There might be people that are 316 pounds. It's going to be a comp like that intensity is going to be completely different for someone that's 300 compared to someone that's 200. So do what's slow or what's mo do what's moderate for you. Now we're starting with our sit-ups. Our sit now sit-ups are the next progression to crunches. We're going to do three sets up to 15, 60 second rest times. And just like with our crunches, if we can get 15, no problem, use a ball, a medicine ball, use a dumbbell and add some resistance to the exercise. Because like I said before, the abs are just like any other muscle. In order for them to get stronger, we got to keep adding some more weight to it. From our sit-ups, we're going to go into our Russian twists. Those are going to replace our side crunches. Our Russian twists are going to be working the obliques and really help start getting us moving in a whole other plane of motion in that transverse plane. So once again, three sets up to 15 reps. 60 second rest times, add some resistance if you need. And now our leg lifts, instead of going up to six inches, we're gonna go up to 90 degrees. This is, I mean, like I said, this is gonna make it even harder. Three sets up to 15, add some weight if you need to. Planks are staying the exact same. We're gonna go for max time, three sets. The reason why I do this is because this really helps with the stabilization of our uh, of our core with and our spine which is one of the first things our bodies want to do is they want to protect our brain and our uh, spinal cord so it wants that rigidity in the spinal column so we want to reinforce that moving on our pull day so we're moving away from the machines now we're going to do uh we're going to do a lot more with cables dumbbells and things like that moving forward now the first thing we're going to do is some assisted pull-ups. Now if you can do them unassisted, do them unassisted, obviously, and even add weight if that's the, if you can do uh, if you can do the eight to ten reps, no problem. But use the assistant machine, uh, the assisted pull-up machine. Uh, use some really thick bands. Just be careful when you're doing it. I've seen them slip off people's feet and hit where the sun don't shine. Ooh. Knock on wood, it's never happened to me, but maybe one day, hope not. So after that, we're going to move on to our cable pullover. This is going to help work on our straight arm scapular strength, as well as our lats. So now we're hitting the muscles from different angles and working on different kinds of strength curves. Go on to our cable row, we're going to go to our cable shrugs our dumbbell rear flies, our glute hand machine extension. Once it, uh, this is the same thing as the, uh, the back extension machine, except this is uh, more free form and we're gonna be using our own body weight now. Now, if you can't use your body weight, stick with the back extension machine, okay? And keep progressing. Now, with this one, 10 to 12, once again, I want you to hold. If you are going to be adding weight to this, be very careful that you're not swinging the weight around and the weight's controlling you. You wanna be slow and methodical, with, especially with this exercise, because that low back tends to be a very uh, weak point for a lot of people. A lot of the flexion that we get in our low back due to gravity is gonna be happening right in that L3, L4 uh, lumbar spine area. So it can be very tender, it can be very weak, especially if you're someone who has poor posture. So I want you to work on getting the holds and maybe a rule of thumb uh, that you should follow, that I like to follow is 
don't add weight unless you can hold it for a full minute. If you can hold it for a full minute, then you can start adding weight to that. And uh, yeah, just be careful with that one, but it's super important that you do it. Now we're gonna do our dumbbell curl, hit our biceps. We're gonna do our hammer curl, hit that brachioradialis. And then we're gonna do some uh, banded external rotator cuff uh, action. Basically, you can take the band, hold it in both hands, keep the elbows tucked, take the thumbs out while keeping the elbows together, or you can anchor the band to something and do it one arm at a time. And just like that, that's all you need. I hope you can see that up there. But I'll throw a clip in for that. Super important that we do that. The rotator cuff is something that people have a lot of trouble with because it tends to be in a, uh, in a compromised position a lot of the time, especially if you have poor posture. A lot of us are walking around, gravity's acting on us all day. Well, all of us are walking around with gravity, but it brings us forward, brings our, rotates our shoulders inward. That keeps that rotator cuff in a stretched position for a long period of time. That causes it to be weak. And a lot of our uh, postural and back problems can be because of this. So now we're starting to incorporate it. We want to really focus on it. And this one you're also going to do a hold for because this, this muscle, this group of muscles needs to be able to work for a long period of time because gravity is never going to stop working on us. So that muscle has to be able to help pull us uh, back. So 10 to 12, you can increase the, uh, you know, increase the weight on it just like anything else. And then make sure you get some holds in there. Those isometric holds are super important. Cardio and abs again, day three, we went over this. Okay, so now we're gonna go on to our push day in phase two. Now you see here, I've changed it. We're not using any machines anymore. We're moving into the dumbbell territory. So we're gonna start with the dumbbell bench press, the incline dumbbell bench press, and the decline uh, dumbbell bench press. This is gonna hit our chest from three different angles and help it work in uh, help it work and move in all the planes of motion that it, uh, it's designed to. Now, once we get our presses done, we want to focus on the second, uh, the second function of our chest, which is going to be the uh, adduction of our shoulders, which is why next is the high cable flies and the low cable flies. The low cable fly is going to work that upper pec. The high cable is going to work that uh, low, uh, pec major, that lower one, that lower pec. It's kind of op uh, opposite. Then we're going to do our lateral dumbbell raises and our assisted tricep dip. So just like how we were using the assisted machine up here for our assisted pull-ups, now we're going to be doing assisted tricep dip. Now when you're doing the, uh, the dumbbell raise, this is something that so, um, so many people get wrong. You want to make sure that you keep a slight bend in the elbow. You have a staggered stance that'll help you keep balance. You lean forward just a little bit. And when you're bringing the weight up to the side, do it so that your arm is at a 90 degree angle. You don't wanna go any higher than that. That's just gonna be working the trap and take the uh, stress off of that delt. We wanna be working that lateral delt, so keep it at 90 degrees and make sure the thumb is slightly higher than the pinky. That's going to help us keep externally rotated in the shoulder. That will protect our shoulder joint. And that's our push day. Once again, three sets, eight to 10 reps, 60 seconds. Next up, our leg day in phase two. Once again, we're going to be with that seated leg press machine. We're going we're gonna to really abuse this thing, but that's fine because it's a great way to keep building up strength in the lower body in a safe manner. <sighs> Sorry, I've been talking for a while. I hope you're still listening. If you're still listening and you're enjoying this, I know it's a much longer video, some, there's some technical stuff going on, but like, share, comment, subscribe. It really helps me out. Uh, and it causes YouTube to push the info more and more and, that's what I'm about here. I wanna get good information out to as many people as possible. So anyway, legs. 
our seated leg press. Then we're going to go into a goblet squat. And now we're moving into more body weight stuff, if you, if you could see, like, in phase two. And the goblet squat is going to be a great way to add some resistance. And if you can't do a goblet squat, if you're really heavy and a regular squat is enough for you, do a regular body weight squat or even a TRX squat if you can't do a body weight squat. But I want you to start doing that squatting motion, okay? It's one of our fundamental movements and we need to get really good at it. So goblet squat, eight to 10, or a less difficult variation of the squat, depending on your skill level. Next, we're gonna work our, our uh, hamstrings with the dumbbell Romanian deadlift. With this one, uh, be very careful not to round the low back. And this is a, uh, it's a great exercise. It'll help to work uh, the glutes and uh, the hamstrings. Just make sure you don't let the low back curve and take over. You could throw your low back out doing that, but it's an important fundamental movement that we gotta learn how to do. Next up, we're gonna do our side lunges. Just like with the uh, goblet squat, if you can't do a side lunge, then do it with uh, do it with like a TRX, something that you can hold on to and help you out. Or if a side lunge is too easy for you, add some weight. Once again, eight to 10 reps, three sets, 60 second rest periods. We're gonna do our banded glute bridge at, uh, after that. And this is a very important exercise to do. And this is another one of those that guys, I know, it looks a little weird. Just don't make eye contact with anyone while you're doing it and you'll be fine. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna really engage our glutes, excuse me. It's gonna really engage our glutes, especially the glute medius, which for most people tends to be very weak. And a weak glute medius can cause uh, lower back issues. So if you have pain in your lower back or if you have a knot in there, it could be as simple as you need to work your glute medius more, and get that strong. So do these banded glute bridges, three, uh, three sets, 10 to 12, make sure you do a hold at the end, get everything activated and working there. And just like with anything else, if it's too easy, add some weight, add a thicker band. The world is your oyster, you got it. And then we're gonna do our calf raise machine once again. But in addition to that, we're gonna do a seated calf raise. If you watch my video about the calves, then you'll see that in order to work both muscles in the calf, then we have to do our calf raises in both a seated and a standing position because that bend in the knee is gonna to help to influence which one of the two muscles that we're working. Day six and seven, we're gonna stretch an active recovery once again. Do some uh, dynamic stretching, some st static stretching on anything that's too tight, foam rolling, you know, go for a walk, get the blood moving. Mm, that's it for that. And that's phase two, guys. So phase two, we start adding more body weight things. We start making things a little more difficult. And uh, what, uh, once you get done with this, you, you should be ready for phase three. Once again, like with phase one, do three weeks and then do a deload week. Help us uh, recover a little bit and then get and get us primed and ready for phase three. Okay, so phase three, what we're gonna be doing now is we're gonna start incorporating some supersets in here. And what's nice about super uh, supersets is it allows us to get some metabolic stress now on our muscles. If you watched my video on the three ways that muscle grow, uh, can grow, it's mechanical tension through progressive overload, which is what we've been doing so far, which basically just means adding more weight. It's by focusing on the eccentric and getting muscle breakdown. That's the second way. And the third way is to get metabolic stress. You really get that burning sensation in the, in the muscle as the uh, lactic acids and other metabolites burn. Or build up, you get that burn. That's going to be the third way that we're going to add muscle. And now that we're in phase three, we want to start utilizing that as well. So once again, start off uh, day one with our cardio and abs. 
what we're going to do now is we're going to do the same exercises here. We're going to do our sit-ups, we're going to do our Russian twists, and we're going to do our leg lifts to 90 degrees. But we're going to do all of them at once and then have a 60 second rest period. And once again, I want you to go to up to 15. If you can get more than 15, add some resistance. And you're going to do these back to back to back. No rest until you get all three done. We're going to do three full rounds of it. After that's done, we're going to go ahead and do three planks for max time. You'll probably not be able to do your planks for as long as you were able to on phase two if you're doing your supersets properly, but that's fine. Because if you can get the superset in, you're going to be working the core a lot more than just having those rest periods in. So that's uh, day one. Day two is our pull day. We're going to start with our pull-ups and we're going to go for what's called AMRAP. That stands for as many reps as possible, okay? So AMRAP, do three sets. If you can do them unassisted, do them unassisted. If you need to use the assisted pull-up machine, then go ahead and do that, that's fine. Just make sure you, get a, uh, you burn out on them. Now once we're done, we're gonna do our lap pull-downs. We're gonna superset them with a cable pullover. Once again, this is gonna work on our straight arm scapular strength, this cable pullover, and the lat pull down is gonna work on our lats again uh, after we did our pull-ups, but this will help to really focus on just them without having to work out too many stabilizing muscles. We're gonna superset those. It's gonna keep the heart rate up and you're gonna feel a burn in your lats. It's gonna hurt, but it's gonna hurt good. Next up, we're gonna do our close grip cable row and we're going to be supersetting that with our cable shrugs. Now, the reason why I'm supersetting these two together is if you remember that mid trap is going to be involved in the cable row. It's also going to be involved in the cable shrugs if you're doing them properly because you want to go up and back with those cable shrugs. And it's an important postural muscle, keeps us upright. See, I'm kind of bent forward a little bit. That keeps us upright and it's important for that muscle to be really strong. So really build, uh, build it up, strengthen it up by doing uh, this superset. Next up, I have an exercise here that uh, I'm putting in a new one, and this is the face pull. Now the face pull, I want you to do 10 to 12 uh, reps, and I want you to hold it. And this is another one of those exercises that it's more of a corrective exercise that we wanna make sure we're doing in order to prevent any kind of problems in the future. See, the face pull is gonna help work that rotator cuff, it's gonna help work that rear delt, it's gonna help work those traps, and it's gonna help us get open and get a better posture. Especially for a lot of people, a problem is that they like to do a lot of chest, chest is fun. How much do you bench, bro? You know, the classic, you know, the classic uh, lifting question. So not only is gravity taking us like this, now we're doing a lot of these pressing motions, getting these muscles tight. We need to make sure they're evened out. So we wanna do our face pulls a couple times a week. And don't worry about putting a crazy amount of weight on the face pull. This is, like I said, more of a postural corrective exercise that we can overload, but I want you to focus on getting the external rotation on it before you work on adding more weight. <laughs> My watch says I'm being active. I guess it's all the hand moving. So yeah, face pulls are very important. Make sure you're doing them a couple times a week. Those are gonna be supersetted with what's called a W fly. And a W fly, that's replacing our rear delt uh, fly that we were doing before. So what this is gonna do is, this is gonna get us an even better contraction on our rear delt and it's a more advanced form on it. And this one, you're gonna to wanna to do eight to 10 with a 60 second rest period before doing these again. Next, we have the glute ham machine extension. Uh, we're gonna keep doing these. I don't want you supersetting uh, this exercise because especially as someone who's just starting or maybe someone who's you know too overweight, I don't want you to run the risk of hurting yourself I want you to make sure you keep that nice, slow, controlled, do the holds, 
keep the curve in the low back the whole time and really focus on it to uh, work on that stability. Next, we're gonna do our incline curl. We're gonna superset that with our spider curl. This will make sure we hit both the long head and the short head in the bicep. And then finally, we're gonna do our rotator cuff external rotation uh, with a band or if you'd like to do it with a cable to add a little more weight, go ahead and do that. <coughs> and you're gonna do 10 to 12 with a hold on those once again. Day three, our cardio and abs. We already went over this. Uh, oh, one thing I didn't mention is that we're gonna be doing moderate intensity now that we're in phase three. You can do some low intensity, five, 10 minutes to warm up beforehand, but I want 30 minutes work uh, of work at a moderate intensity level. And in this final phase, we're not gonna, we're not gonna be doing more than 30 minutes because we're gonna be doing, that'll give, give us a, a good hour of just cardio a week. And since we're going a moderate intensity, we don't want to go too too far too fast with it. So that'll give us an hour every week, and we've added a little bit of cardio in the form of these supersets as well. So we'll have our heart rate up. But yeah, moderate intensity on cardio and abs in uh, phase three for uh, 30 minutes throughout all three weeks. Now for our push day, we're going to start with push-ups. And we're gonna do three sets, and once again, we're gonna do AMRAP, as many reps as possible, with a 60 second period uh, for rest. And then be sure to log in how many you were able to get on uh, in here. Uh, you can do it uh, like that. Uh, take your total, put it in here, and you can see if your total uh, has, if your total has improved from week to week, which it should with everything that we're doing. Next, we're gonna do our incline and our decline push-ups. These, I want you to superset them. And I want you to start uh, with all these push-ups. And because we're doing AMRAP, we're gonna be tired. We're not gonna be able to get as much weight at our next ones, but that's fine because we're still gonna be able to build muscle and really get the heart rate going from the beginning. That'll help us to burn more calories during the workout rather than doing these at the end. So three supersets on these, keep going. Now we're gonna go here, you see I have the dumbbell bench, the incline bench uh, again, and you can use a barbell now if you prefer. If you're comfortable uh, now, you're in phase three, you've built up some strength, you've built up some of the mind-muscle connection that we need. If you feel comfortable using a barbell, go ahead and use it. I didn't put the barbell in there because, like I said, there's a certain gym I'm thinking about you possibly doing this at that doesn't have it. And also, maybe you don't have a training partner, maybe you don't have someone to spot you. Dumbbell is a great way to do that, and it is easier on your shoulder. So if you're someone who has a shoulder problem, a dumbbell bench press uh, can be better. So go ahead and do your, uh, uh, do your dumbbell bench, your incline bench. We're gonna do our low cable flies and we're gonna do our high cable flies again. Not a lot of uh, variation in push day from uh, phase two to phase three because we've al already in phase two, we're working our chest and our pushing, uh, our pushing muscles in every way that they want to be working. So then we have our lateral dumbbell raise. We have our tricep cable push down and we have our overhead cable tricep extensions. Doing these, uh, doing these, we'll be able to work the tricep in all three heads. And the lateral dumbbell raise, if you prefer to do it with a cable now, now that you are more, uh, now that you're more advanced, you can go ahead and do it with a cable if you want. That'll add more of a stretch on the on that lateral head, but. If you're still uh, figuring it out, stick with the dumbbell raise, and then uh, that's that's our push day. Okay. Now some people are gonna say, wait, you don't have the ant you don't have anything for your anterior your deltoid, your front, your uh, front delt right here. Yes, I do. It's being worked in all of these different ones, and at this point, it's getting a lot of volume and training in. And like I said. This isn't uh, this isn't a very advanced training program. In my stage two program that that I'll have uh, later on, 
definitely we're going to be working a lot harder on it. So don't come at me in the comments, wait a minute, you forgot one. No, it's being worked with everything else. So that's our push day. Once again, use a barbell if, you, if you'd like to. And then we have our leg day. Now with our leg day, I have here a body weight squat. I want you to do as many reps as possible for three sets. Now, if you're 300 pounds, this is going to be way different than for someone who's 200, you know, or 150. And if you're, if, if body weight, uh, if you think, oh, that's too easy, body weight squats too easy, do them till failure and then tell me how easy they are. Okay. It's when you do three, four five of them, it's not a big deal, but when you're taking it all the way and you're making sure you get your butt down to the ground, you're going to be feeling it. Especially if you don't train that way normally, you don't get all those reps in. But just make sure you're doing a proper form on it, get that hip hinge, get that butt to the ground, and drive up through the heels, and make sure you get that uh, hip extension. Next, we're going to go for our leg press. You can keep using the uh, seated leg press, or now you can move on and do the plated one. Uh, whatever whatever you prefer, they're both going to be very similar. And maybe your gym's just, maybe it's just packed. That gives you an option. Just decide which one you want to do. After that, we're going to do our goblet squat. A lot of squatting, but it's a fundamental movement, so we got to do it. So we're going to do our goblet squat. We're going to superset that with our dumbbell Romanian deadlift. And the reason why we're doing this is because... The goblet squat's going to focus a lot on the glutes and the quads. So the dumbbell, we can work, uh, Romanian deadlift, we can work on the hamstrings, that opposite muscle. It'll be involved in stabilization during the squat, but it's not going to be working on contracting. So we can superset that. And then we're going to do our sliding side lunges. A lot of gyms are going to have those, uh, those like furniture uh, move. Uh, movers that you put under like the legs of something of the and you can move it across the carpet Get on one of those and use that and do a sliding side lunge go back and forth do those We're gonna do our banded glute bridge once again. We're gonna do it with some weight and then uh, we have our uh, calf raises instead of the machine we can do it now with you know with some dumbbells we can do it with a barbell we want to do it standing up. If uh, if you're having a little trouble balancing, you can do it on the uh, with a Smith machine. It's fine to take away some of that stabilization requirements and really focus on doing that uh, calf raise. And then we're going to do our seated calf raise once again. And I want you to superset those, really kill those calves. Finally, day six, day seven, on phase three is rest again, stretch and active recovery. Like I said before, guys, recovery is the most important part of any of this, along with our nutrition. So that's phase three, and I hope you can kind of see how each time, you know, we get a little more advanced, a little more advanced, bring more muscles into it, bring more movement patterns into it, and just keep building uh, on itself. Like I said, I wanted this program to have a low entry barrier and I wanted it to be able to help anybody, no matter the age or gender or uh, progress level. Because if you are a more advanced lifter, you can do this. You can, uh, you're just gonna, you're gonna be doing a lot more weight. And some of you out there that think you're an advanced lifter because you've been lifting for a while, you might benefit from break, uh, uh, breaking up your routine, going back to this, uh, going back to something like this, and really re reestablishing the basics. So I'll have that linked up for you guys. Uh, long video today, I know, but I don't want you to go into this program with no idea really what's going on as far as the logic of it goes. Eventually, I will have all these exercises up on my channel. It's just really difficult to get all of these in in a short period of time, but I wanted this available to you uh, with the new year. So happy new year, everyone. I hope you celebrated 
uh, and had fun. I recovered all day yesterday, not going to lie. You know, I'm always trying to be honest with you guys. So like, share, comment, subscribe. Let me know if you're going to be trying this program out. And, you know, in a month from now, two months from now, you know, uh, send your progress pics in uh, to the email, LimitBreakerFitnessLLC at gmail.com. I want to see how you guys are doing with this, and maybe I'll shout you out on the channel. And tell your friends. Uh, it's always easier to do something when you have a support system and you have a training partner. So well, that's all I got for you today, guys. Uh, let's kick 2023's butt, all right? If you need help keeping your resolution, I'll be right here to help you do that. We're going to get you in shape. We're going to get some gains. We're going to make some progress. We're going to take over. It's takeover season, baby, right? Let's do it. Later, guys.